The Lockheed AC-130, nicknamed the Angel of Death, was the largest and most heavily armed gunship in the world. It was a heavily modified version of the C-130 Hercules transport aircraft. Almost every part of the plane's 100 feet fuselage featured a weapon of some sort. The AC-130 could be equipped with a wide array of cannons and machine guns, including a 105mm M102 howitzer, a 40mm Bofors cannon, and a 25mm GAU-12 equalizer, a five-barrel Gatling-style cannon. Additionally, there was room for missiles, rocket pods, and even GBU-39 small-diameter bombs, making the AC-130 a formidable opponent for enemy troops and vehicles on the ground. Notably, it often proved to be a literal lifesaver for Allied soldiers in need of close air support. The AC-130 armament varies, allowing it to optimize for each mission. Whether the mission requires supporting ground troops, escorting a vehicle convoy, or providing air support during a battle, the primary goal was to ensure that the weaponry could engage various targets such as armored vehicles, buildings, and fortifications. Weapons load crews had the responsibility of loading and maintaining the weapon systems of any aircraft. This involved loading and unloading bombs, missiles, ammunition for guns, and any other types of ordnance the aircraft might carry. Due to the numerous weapons carried by the AC-130, this process was often lengthy. The howitzer, in particular, presented a significant challenge. With shells approximately two feet long and weighing 100 pound each, these and other shells were stored in secure ammunition racks to prevent them from rolling around during flight. One of the most important aspects of operating a C-130 is conducting the pre-flight check. Typically, air crews performed this check while ground crews were refueling and preparing the plane for takeoff. The AC-130, like many modern military aircraft, incorporated advanced digital systems and electronics. The pre-flight checks involved a series of systematic procedures to ensure all these systems functioned correctly before a mission. Then, the crews first initiated the aircraft's onboard computers and ran diagnostic checks. This included checking navigation systems, communication systems, and weapon control systems. Next, they evaluated the sensor and surveillance equipment, the weapon systems, and the flight control systems. Other important features evaluated during this time were communication systems, navigation equipment, and electronic countermeasures. AC-130 carried a complement of eight, all assigned to specific duties during pre-flight, flight, and battle coordination. Coordination was extremely important, especially during periods of high stress. Despite its size, the AC-130 proved to be quite nimble in the air. It had a maximum takeoff weight of around 155,000 pounds and a top speed of over 416 mile per hour. Though its service ceiling was listed as 39,000 feet, the aircraft generally stayed closer to the ground where it could provide much needed heavy weapon support for troops. Once airborne, the AC-130 posed a threat to enemies in the air, sea, and on the ground. Its incredible versatility and weapons options allowed it to engage and destroy virtually any target. The cockpit typically featured two pilots and two combat systems officers in a typical AC-130 mission. The pilot's primary role was to fly the aircraft. Due to the nature of the AC-130 missions, the men and women often had to maneuver the plane under challenging conditions, such as low altitude flight and in heavy combat zones. The CSO operated the AC-130 weapon systems, which included targeting and firing the guns, cannons, and missiles. This often involved tactical coordination with the flight officers in the back. Since certain guns like the howitzer could not be fired remotely, these crew members were responsible for operating this and other heavy weapons. AC-130 air crews frequently carried out live fire training missions to guarantee peak readiness. This provided crew members with crucial experience with the weapons and other systems, ensuring their proper performance in real-life situations. Crews not only received training in firing the weapons, but also in inspecting and maintaining them. The greater their understanding of the different systems under their control, the better equipped they were to handle any situation they encountered. Aiming coordination, a crucial skill, was practiced extensively involving two or more crew members collaborating on weapon operation to enhance both efficiency and accuracy. The AC-130 essentially rained bullets, rockets, and cannon shells down onto targets below. However, with proper aiming coordination, 
the crews ensured they struck the intended targets regardless of whether they were mobile, stationary, or airborne. Although air crews worked very hard to ensure the effectiveness of the AC-130 in its role, maintenance crews were equally dedicated to ensuring the plane itself could perform as intended. This included conducting regular checks and servicing at specific intervals such as daily, weekly, or monthly. This routine maintenance ensured that all systems functioned correctly and helped identify potential issues before they became serious. The AC-130 had a number of very sophisticated systems, and specialized repair and inspecting crews were assigned to things like armaments, sensors, and avionics. Regular physical inspections were also carried out to ensure the structural integrity of the aircraft. This included checking for any damage to the airframe, wear and tear, and ensuring that all structural components were in good condition, especially right before and after a mission. In 2023, the 4th Special Operations Squadron retired three of the very last AC-130U Spooky models. This event culminated in a special flyover at Hurlburt Field in Florida. These specialized gunships had served for more than 25 years, and their ability to retire safely after all of that time is a testament to the men and women who flew them, as well as to those who maintained them. The U.S. military has been served by the C-130 since 1956, nearly as long as another large aircraft, the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress. The B-52 was a long-range subsonic strategic bomber and, in its time, was one of the most formidable weapons of war ever crafted. With its 159 feet length and 185 feet wingspan, the B-52 could carry up to 70,000 pound of ordnance and bombs across nearly 9,000 miles. It served extensively in Vietnam and in the conflicts in the Middle East and might end up being the first U.S. aircraft to serve for more than 100 years. The B-52, a Cold War aircraft, was designed to respond swiftly to a nuclear attack, maintaining several fully loaded planes at air bases globally. In the event of an emergency, it was crucial for both the aircraft and its crews to respond instantly. A concept known as a scramble in military aviation terms. A scramble involves being on high alert for a specific period, ensuring the quick reaction capability of the B-52 served as a significant deterrent against potential adversaries. This readiness guaranteed that the bomber force was always prepared for various missions. Even today, routine drills and exercises are carried out to uphold the efficiency and readiness of the scramble process. Unfortunately, the B-52 faced a major problem that hindered it from becoming an effective first response aircraft. Its engines took up to an hour to warm up properly. To overcome this issue, Stratofortress engineers devised a system called the cart start. The cart start involved attaching small explosive cartridges to the aircraft's turbines. When ignited, the engines immediately started spinning. Once the engines achieved self-sustaining combustion and reached idle speed, the aircraft could operate under its power, typically in under 10 minutes. The United States military strategically designed many models of the B-52 with an analog cockpit, despite projecting the aircraft to fly until at least 2050. This choice was made because analog systems are generally less susceptible to certain forms of electronic warfare, such as hacking or cyber attacks. In the digital age, where cyber warfare capabilities are a significant concern, the analog nature of the B-52 systems could have offered an extra layer of protection against digital intrusions.